Okay, we're still talking about limits, and in this section, the topic is evaluating limits. So you have a given function, and you want to find the limit of that function as x approaches a particular value. And what we're going to do here is work through a lot of examples, and along the way, I'll point out important points and important ideas as we go. So here's the, the first few examples. These three are easy. In this case, we can evaluate the limits by substitution. And that means we can simply substitute the value for the variable into the expression and get an answer. If you can simply put the value for the variable into the expression and get a finite real number, then that value is the limit. And we can do that in all of these. This, this simply ends up being 4 squared. This is the limit as x approaches 4 of this, x squared plus 2x minus 5. So it's going to be 4 squared plus 2 times 4 minus 5. And we can do that in our heads. That 16 plus 8 is 24 minus 5 is 19. And that's our answer. In this next one, the limit as x approaches negative 3 of, of 2 to the x. So we can just put negative 3 in for the variable here. And the answer is 2 to the negative 3. And we remember that a negative exponent is the same thing as 1 over that same thing with the positive exponent. So it's 1 over 2 cubed or 1 eighth. And this next one looks tricky, but it's not. The, the limit as x approaches e of the inverse sine of the natural log of x. And that sounds hard until you realize that, well, we're, we're just putting in a value of e for the variable. So this gives us the natural log of e, which is 1. So the problem becomes the inverse sine of 1. So the inverse sine of 1, what is that? Well, that's the, the angle at which the sine value equals 1. And in my mind, I picture a little unit circle. And the sine is the y value. So we're right up there at the top of the unit circle. And that's at a value of pi over 2 in radians. Or if you wanted to, it would be 90 degrees. But we typically give these answers in radians. So the answer is pi over 2. These next examples involve evaluating a limit for a piecewise function. And for piecewise functions, the interesting behavior occurs where the definition of, of the function changes. That where, that's where we can end up with a discontinuity, perhaps, not necessarily, but perhaps. And in other places, we typically have just some regular function, such as these here. And we see that in the, the first problem here. The limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. Well, this is f of x here. And it's defined as x minus 2 for values less than negative 1, and x cubed for values between negative 1 and 1, and x squared for values greater than 1. So as x approaches 3, we're here in this, uh, this set of x values, where x is greater than 1. So this is just the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared. OK, and that's easy. That's just 3 squared, or 9. There's nothing strange going on in this function at an x value of 3. The, the unusual behavior, or the potentially unusual behavior, occurs here at negative 1 and at positive 1. So at x equals 3, we just look at the function that defines f, or the expression here, which defines f for that value. And we end up with 9. OK, the next problem here, the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x. Well, if x is less than negative 1, we have one expression. And if it's greater than negative 1, we have another. So let's find those one-sided limits. Let's talk about the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left. And to find that, we just plug negative 1 into this expression, because this is where x is less than negative 1. So it becomes negative 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. And let's also look at the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right. So x is just a little bit bigger than negative 1. So we're using this expression, x cubed. So that's negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1. 
So we see we approach a different y value when we're getting close to negative 1 on different sides. So the limit doesn't exist. So if you want to write that for an answer here, you can just say the limit does not exist. And we've, we've talked about the left side and right side limits in that case. Okay, and then the last part of the problem here, the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. Well, look back at our function. If x is less than 1, it's x cubed. And if it's greater than 1, it's x squared. So we need to think about the left and right limits here also. So let's talk about the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. And when, it's, when x is a little bit less than 1, then we're talking about x cubed. So this is just 1 cubed, which is 1. And the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x, well, if x is just a little bit bigger than 1, then our function is x squared. Remember right here, x is a little bit bigger than 1. It's x squared. So this is just 1 squared, which is 1. So the left and right limits both exist, and they're the same, so that is the limit. So the answer here is 1.